Hello, people. How are you doing? I recently reread The Lightning Thief and The, and the Sea of Monsters. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about the We Check into CC Spawn Resort chapter, which is where Percy gets turned into a guinea pig. And a lot of other things happen. So I don't know how long this is going to take because there's a lot of cool things in this chapter. So it might be here for a while, might not. I can't tell the future and I'm bad at planning, but I will put in timestamps for you people to bounce around as you will. Thanks, let's get into it. So first off, this chapter just, it really kind of shifts the book into a different gear. Um, so far, we've had a lot of weird things happening with Tantalus and then, you know, Luke and the Princess Andromeda. We don't know what the heck's going on with him at this point. And uh, they get like, then Clarice just shows up in the river like right next to them on this like old so like civil war ship with a bunch of dead confederates some weird shit is happening uh but then like boom literally that little civil war ship gets kablammed uh because Clarice thought it would be a good idea to drive it straight towards the gigantic living monstrous whirlpool and shoot cannons at it uh and then they get plucked up by the uh Lady of Death up on the cliff, Scylla. So, yes, things was happening, but then kablam, Percy and Annabeth now alone in a lifeboat. <laughs> As a good Percy Beth shipper, not something that upset me. So, shift in the book starts with this chapter. Big one right off the bat. There's this nice little part I liked where Percy's kind of upset with Annabeth for being upset with Tyson. Which isn't really fair because Percy was also upset with Tyson. But a lot of things were happening. They're 13, I'll forgive. Um, but then Percy says this thing about how he tried to stay mad at her, but it wasn't easy. We'd been through a lot together. She'd saved my life plenty of times. It was stupid me to resent her. And I just... It's that the thing with the Percy best ship, guys. and It's just we all know it. it. It got built so early and so strong. And just little moments like this that I love, just show how strong it is. Before it was ever a relationship that we all adored, you know, it was a friendship that was obviously going towards a relationship, but it was a friendship that was real and solid, even though they were both so young. It was awesome. But anyway, shortly thereafter, big moment here, Annabeth tells Percy about the prophecy a little bit, the great prophecy, in which a child of the big three will you know, either save Olympus or destroy it. And so that was just a big moment. Not really the moment that I wanted to talk about a lot, but it's definitely a big moment that shouldn't be overlooked. Shows trust between Annabeth and Percy. She's a little rebellious in his tune because she wasn't supposed to tell. But um, yeah, I guess after you all almost get blown up and a bunch of shit happens and the guy who told you not to tell got exiled anyway, you know, you, you just kind of roll with it. So yeah. Next off... This is a big one that I, I have some strong feelings about. I just want to read you guys about a, about a paragraph here, and then we'll get into it. So this is right after they, they've arrived at CC Spawn Resort, and they are greeted by Hyla, who we, you know, meet later. But anyway, right now she's just like an attendant um, at CC Spawn Resort. So here we go. Uh, now here's the thing. Annabeth and I were used to traps, and usually those traps looked good at first. So I expected the clipboard lady to turn into a snake or a demon, or something, any minute. But on the other hand, we've been floating in a rope up for most of the day. I was hot, tired, and hungry. And when this lady mentioned a luau, my stomach sat up on its hind legs and begged like a dog. I guess it couldn't hurt, Annabeth muttered. Of course it could, but we followed the lady anyway. Okay, okay, can... <sighs> I just, I don't get it with these guys, man. Like, I just don't. This happens in The Lightning Thief. Like, every time they encounter trouble, it's like they have a feeling that there's trouble. And for these people, it's not like, you know, socially awkward people like me. I'm sure a lot of you, no offense. You know, we go into public and there's people around and we're like, oh, man, a lot of bad stuff could happen. Like, sure, it could. Like, you could say hi to someone. They could say hi back. And then you're in this weird situation where you don't know if to talk more or leave when your whole body's screaming to leave, but you're not sure if you should leave because you think that might be rude and just confusing. Okay, so that's uncomfortable. But these people 
are actual life or death uh, situations. Like all the time. Like life and death, there's, there's a monster that wants to eat you or turn you into stone. Or the, maybe the monster has a chihuahua that's going to turn into a giant monster that wants to burn you, poison you, then eat you. And then force you to jump off a bridge. There's a lot of things that could happen that they just kind of walk into. Okay, now a lightning thief I can understand. They're 12. They just left camp. They don't really know what they're doing. Annabeth hasn't really been in the mortal world a long time. Grover, bless his heart. And then Percy just figured out that all this shit was real. It's confusing. Okay. But now they know. They know. And he just says he knows. And y'all are just going to run with it anyway because you're hungry? No. Okay, no. What? That is so reckless. Why would you? Like, there, what could go wrong? Oh, I. we know what could go wrong. Okay, then turn around. Then turn around. Don't keep walking up further into something that you clearly already have a very strong idea that it's bad. Okay? I just, I can't with these people sometimes. Like, guys, look out for yourselves a little more. Okay, we love you, and I understand it's an adventure novel. And yeah, I guess sometimes you just gotta throw yourself into the fire. But a little self-preservation, guys, it's just hunger. I'm sorry. You can get a snack later, maybe. But you know, if you die, I don't know if there's good food in the underworld for you. Hey. So anyway, of course, they follow. They follow Highland to the big awesome resort with a bunch of swimming pools. No men. All women. This could honestly sound good either way. Uh, maybe okay whatever but so then they just go up and they walk into the awesome room and Cersei's in there and here's another line kind of along the same lines of my rant uh there was a bunch of expensive looking white furniture and on the table in one corner was a large wire pet cage the cage seemed out of place but I didn't think about it too much because just then I saw the lady who'd been singing and whoa Percy Okay, you guys, you got to get your priorities straight. Pretty ladies, awesome, okay? Food, awesome. <laughs> All right. Life, sometimes not awesome. Okay, sure. But if you don't have life, then you can't have those things either. And if you just keep putting this stuff in front of your general survival, it's... <sighs> anyway, so here's Cersei. She's really pretty. She's singing the tunes. She making awesome weave work. Our kids are enchanted here. All right. The duo of dreams, of love and hope. They're enchanted. They're in trubs. And then we just kind of get into some sad stuff. Okay. Because Cersei basically just tells them, you both need work. Percy, you really need work. And then they separate. And then it's just Percy. And it's just Cersei. I didn't realize that would rhyme until I said it out loud. And then she just starts roasting him. Okay, and at this point he's a little woozy by the the singing. Cersei's an enchantress. I'm sure she's got some voodoo working in the air. And it's just sad because she makes Percy look at every bad part of himself. And this part is extra painful, too, because Percy really wants to please Cersei. I'm not sure if it's just because she's really a prete and he is just a young lad. It's hard. It's hard to, you know, be steel sometimes. But anyway, or if it's just because she's an enchantress, too, and she's, you know, working the magic. Could be both. Probably is both. But anyway, Percy really doesn't want to displease her. And he's enthralled with her, and he's missing the fact that she's a complete piece of schist, okay? And so she's just making him feel like, it's kind of like what a toxic relationship looks like, guys. Just, and girls, just watch out. So anyway, um, so things like, you see, Percy, to unlock your potential, you'll need serious help. The first step is admitting that you're not happy the way you are. And 
so then he says something like, I fidgeted in front of the mirror. I hated thinking about my appearance, like the first zit that had cropped up on my nose at the beginning of the school year, or the fact that my two front teeth weren't perfectly even, or that my hair never stayed down straight. Cece's voice brought all of these things to my mind as if she were passing me under a microscope and my clothes were not cool. I knew that. Who cares, part of me thought, but standing in front of Cece's mirror, it was hard to see anything good in myself. So this is just a feels bad situation where CC is playing into his insecurities. And one, I just think it's like a good message because, you know, kind of what Percy, what part of his brain knows is, yeah, these things, they don't matter. They're just human flaws. All of us humans have them, you know, even like the best looking person out there, there's some physical flaw, you know, if we're just looking physical, we're, which is what Cersei is making him look at. But she's, taking away that part of him that is whatever secure and just flushing out all the insecurities and just him alone with her and then it goes to a part where it says uh, she's showing him what his ideal self would be it says i saw myself a reflection but not a reflection shimmering there on the cloth was a cooler version of percy jackson with just the right clothes a confident smile on my face my teeth were straight no zits a perfect tan more athletic, maybe a couple of inches taller. It was me without the faults. I just think this part, one, is just really sad, but it's also important to see how all these securities, insecurities affect Percy and when everything else is stripped away and it's just him and the insecurities, the insecurities win because he, he goes with what Cersei says and he ends up getting turned into a guinea pig because he wants everything to be perfect right away. And for there to be some magic fix which usually that's not the right way to go you know usually you just got to accept your things accept yourself for what you are improve in ways you can and deal with the things you can't and learn to be happy with yourself in some way anyway and you know percy always has to deal with a people's opinions of him you know like growing up with gabe people being jerks to him at school all the time he never has this great relationship with people and then, but then he gets to like Camp Half Blood, where it's this back and forth of like praise and ridicule. Until one hand, he's the son of Poseidon, and he's this huge, powerful thing. Some people want to kill him. Some people are amazed by him, or both. And then he goes and saves the camp, and then he's treated for a, like a hero. And then he comes back to camp the next year, and now his mentor is gone. This jerk from the underworld is here. He's like, everyone's making fun of him again, even at his favorite place in the world. He just saw his brother blow up basically in his mind. And then now he's here and all he's seen is flaws by this person that he wants to see good in him being Cersei, which is the exact wrong person to look for. And then Wada Bing, he becomes a guinea pig and Cersei just makes him feel like terrible for being a man and it's a real bad deal. But then, then we have Annabeth. Annabeth babies. So Annabeth just does a lot of cool things in this chapter. So she bursts into the scene. She's interrupting Cersei's maniacal speech to Percy about how all men are pigs, but now they're guinea pigs apparently because that's easier to take care of. And uh, don't be mean or those pirate guinea pigs over there will probably eat you alive as a guinea pig while well, they're guinea pigs too. Um, or, you know, I could just give you the good treatment where I just send you off to some kindergartner. You know, that whole thing. And then Annabeth pops in. And Cersei, with her magic powers, just kicks his jeans under a table. And tries to work her magic on Annabeth now. Okay? Tries to appeal to Annabeth's... She tries to pull the whole, like, oh, man, get all the glory have some for yourself, be awesome, be a sorceress, be an awesome female sorceress like me and Medea and all these other people, uh, which is kind of committing the villain flaw of giving up your identity. Like Cersei, I don't think has a great reputation in the books, or I mean, in the myth, and Annabeth would know that. So it's a straight up alarm that reveals probably not a good person to trust, also reveals Percy eh, probably got turned into something bad. Uh, not saying guinea pigs are bad, they're adorable. But you really don't want to, well, it might be kind of nice to be one. Not in this situation. So, but the one cool thing that I really wanted to address 
is like we always applaud Percy for turning down immortality, turning down being a god so he could stay and be with Annabeth. It's adorable and it deserves to be applauded, deserves to be praised. But here, here at the age of 13, Annabeth is, she's totally given an option to, to be a immortal sorceress. Let me see if I can find this same thing. Right here. Stay with me, CC was telling Annabeth. Study with me. You can join our staff, become a sorceress, learn to bend others to your will. You will become immortal. And then Annabeth protests. She says, you are too intelligent, my dear. You know better than to trust that silly camp for heroes. Other things. Okay, so I get it's not the same thing as like being a god, but she's offered immortality to with awesome magic power, living on this dope island with a bunch of swimming pools. Okay, and this is also, it's kind of like, very much like when she's offered to be a hunter. In the next book, like, you know, man, just power for yourself and you get to live forever. Um, but she doesn't even seem like remotely phased by this. She immediately wants to know where Percy is. And then she immediately starts taking, um, th shooting in her plan to free Percy. I just think it's awesome how, you know, she does it too. She turns down all these things to save Percy, to stay to the mission, uh, to put others before her. Because Annabeth is just awesome. Okay. And another really cool thing is here, just the parallels that she has with Odysseus. Uh, because as you all probably know in the Odyssey, when Odysseus uh, and his crew come up onto Cersei's island, the crew is dumb and they get turned into pigs. And then Odysseus goes to save them and Hermes gives him some leaves or whatever that make him immune to Cersei's power so then he can go into Cersei's, uh, you know, wherever, she, like house or whatever and be like, yo, what up? And she's like, okay, haha, <laughs> cool, yeah, like drink this. Why aren't you turning into a pig? Haha, <laughs> because I have... Hermes stuff, knife, unleash my friends. That's what happens with Odysseus. And that's exactly what Annabeth does here. She uses her tactical skills to get Cersei out of the room. Locates Percy's pants. Takes the multivitamin, looks into the cage of guinea pigs. Which one's Percy? It's probably not that little clean one. There's a bunch of dirty ones right there. Which one could it be? Anyway doesn't have time to do anything because Cersei's a liar and didn't give her a full minute. And then she comes in thinking she's all awesome, right? Because she's a big bag sorceress with all her other sorceress fans. And she thinks she can just bully Annabeth now because Annabeth turned down her offer, you know? I think she can just turn her into a shrew. No, because Annabeth already had Hermes multivitamins, which brings in one of the best lines in all the series. Where is it? Oh, yes. Curse Hermes and his multivitamins. Great line. Bad last word, Cersei. And Beth does the knife thing, pours in the multivitamins, and poof. Our boys are back. Why I say boys? Because it's not just Percy. Percy and Blackbeard and his crew. Yeah, you guys thought that Blackbeard got decapitated by some British officer or whatever the history books say. Wrong. Wrong. He wound up on a spa island by a Greek sorceress in the Sea of Monsters and then was turned into a guinea pig for centuries. But he lived on, waiting, waiting for a 13-year-old girl to pour in multivitamins into his cage so he could exact his vicious revenge and eat lettuce. And that is what he does. Annabeth saves the day. Pirates destroy an island. Percy is back and clothed because apparently when you multivitamins, no, not only turn you back to human, but it takes your clothes that were on the floor and puts them back onto you. Good times, awesome times, leading into one of the greatest Persebeth moments of all. The day is saved, kind of. They still have to escape the island. But now there's vicious pirates trying to kill the sorceress ladies. So that's awesome. 
But then Percy is back. He's feeling a little silly about himself. He totally just walked into this place that he knew was dangerous and then drank suspicious liquid by a suspicious lady that he'd never met before. What could go wrong? He was turned to a guinea pig. Oh no, now he feels bad about it. He's afraid Annabeth is going to be mad at him. But what instead happens, you may ask? What happens? Annabeth sheathed her knife and glared at me. Thanks, I faltered. I'm really sorry. Before I could figure out how to apologize for being such an idiot, she tackled me we, She tackled me with a hug, then pulled away just as quickly. I'm glad you're not a guinea pig. Me too. I hoped my face wasn't as red as it felt. She undid the golden braids in her hair. Come on, seaweed brain, she said. We have to get away while Cersei's distracted. Boys and girls, there's just some things in this life that is pure. And Annabeth totally owning Cersei. Percy totally getting owned through his insecurities, showing he, despite being the son of Poseidon, despite having this on, well, no, despite having this literal godly blood in his veins, besides being the, the hero of prophecy, he's still vulnerable. He gives into that vulnerabilities, totally owned, but he's got Annabeth, his friend, future girlfriend, but still always going to have his back. Saves him, saves the day, gives him a hug. And the, the young purse of Eth hugs. I will never, never get old. Goodness alive, they are so pure. And this is just a great chapter. They go on their way. And then Percy realizes that he can just sail like a complete pirate ship on his own, which is awesome. And that was the chapter. So many cool, cool things. Really look into the human mind. Really looking into all these things like insecurities that I've gone on and on about. Really looking at friendship, selflessness, sacrifice, intelligence, parallels to the myth in an awesome way. Also, Annabeth has so many parallels with Odysseus in this book because the next chapter she has hubris. It's the same uh, fatal fall of Odysseus. It's a really cool chapter, really cool turning book, uh, point in the book, really good um, like staple in the Percibeth relationship. And it was, it was it's awesome. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, like I said, I definitely went a long time. So timestamps, I hope you guys bounced around. Um, and yeah, have a good one.